My name is Dr. Harry Witchell, and this is a screencast to help you understand the concept that there are two forces on each ion, a chemical force and an electrical force. This is part two of a four-part series of screencasts. In this installment, we consider an example of electrical and chemical forces inside the cell. In order to show why, only a tiny number of ions need to move across the membrane to create an electric field. To make this clear, let's consider an example of an electric field across a membrane. Let's say there are 1 million sodium ions per microliter outside the cell, and only 100,000 sodium ions per microliter inside the cell. Plainly, you cannot have unbalanced charge because nature abhors that. Unbalanced charge attracts its opposite, so any unbalanced positive charge will attract a negative charge to it. Once two exactly opposite charges are next to each other, they will effectively cancel out. They will create no net electric field at any long distance from them. A long distance is when you are much further from the two charges than they are from each other. So in our example, let's say there are also 1 million chloride ions per microliter outside the cell, thus matching the sodium, and also 100,000 chloride ions per microliter inside the cell, thus matching the sodium ions inside. At this point, there is no electric field across the membrane, because all positive charges are matched by negative ions. However, the chemical gradient for both sodium and chloride are creating a force driving those ions inward. Normally, charged ions do not go through a cell membrane because charged ions are hydrophilic, while much of the membrane is hydrophobic and impenetrable to charged ions. Let's say we have some sodium channels in that membrane, but no chloride channels, so sodium can go across the membrane, but chloride cannot. What happens if a sodium channel opens and 10 sodium ions move from outside to inside, but no chloride ions can follow? Here we show the 10 positive sodium ions. They aren't all the sodium ions in solution. In fact, there are a million sodium ions. But all those million sodium ions will be right next to a balancing chloride ion, so all their charges cancel out, and they will not contribute to the electric field or to the voltage. This is the kind of ionic activity that might occur during the action potential. Surprisingly little sodium will enter the cell. Only 10 ions are shown here just to make the animation easier to follow. The number of ions would really depend on how wide and how long the axon was. The 10 sodium ions shown here are positive charges that will be unbalanced if they go through the membrane without being accompanied by a chloride ion. When the sodium channel has opened, there will be a sodium conductance, but not a chloride conductance. If the membrane had been equally permeable to sodium and chloride, Every sodium that went across the membrane would be accompanied by a chloride. There would thus be no charge imbalance across the membrane, so there would be no transmembrane electric field, and Vm would remain zero. However, in this example, sodium goes across the membrane, but chloride does not. When the positive ions cross the membrane, they leave behind negative ions, this imbalance of charge across the membrane will create an electric field. Now, there is a strong electric field across the membrane, which will push the sodium ions outward. However, the chemical force on sodium ions, based on the concentration gradient, is virtually unchanged. The sodium concentration outside the cell has gone from 1 million sodium ions to 999,990. Likewise, the sodium concentration inside has gone from 100,000 sodium ions to 100,010. This electric field created by sodium ion movement will create an electric force that will affect potassium ions, calcium ions, chloride ions, etc., as well as the sodium ions.